Good evening, YouTube friends and family. This is your girl, Laura, coming to you with another video today. Today, we will be working on series number six as far as the things that Christians need to clean up. And number six deals with cleaning up all negativity. And as you know, uh, I've been reading John 3 and 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. Um, and if you want to know the beginning of this series and all 10 of the things that we need to clean up and the study that I've been doing about the areas in which we get attacked in as Christians, go all the way back to series number one, which involves selfishness. But today we're going to be working on number six, cleaning up all negativity. I love to watch movies. I'm a huge movie fan, buff, whatever you may want to call it. And I love movies in which the characters overcome a negative situation and turn it into a positive. As you can see here in front of you, um, I have the movie Unbroken. It's a true story based on a POW uh, in Japan. This young man endured horrendous um, torture, mind games, um, everything that you can think of in order to break his spirit. Uh, but he didn't allow it to. And as a matter of fact, um, after he escaped, after they were rescued, uh, he went back to find the uh, captain or whatever the guy was that inflicted all this torture upon him, but he was already gone. What he found out is that this man, the reason why he was so horrible and so cruel is because his father had treated him the exact same way. So he inflicted that treatment on others. The abuser became... Um, the abused became the abuser. And so that happens. Um, as a matter of fact, this young man, um, he went back to march in a parade in Japan and he was an integral part of changing um, military policy as far as the treatment of POWs in Japan. But I want to ask you, my friend, did you know that negativity can kill? It can kill you. It can kill others. Did you know that negativity can make you very sick? Did you know that negativity can cause depression? It can ruin relationships? Well, I guess you say, how is that, Laura? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you. The Bible states that in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. But how often do we kill with our words? Negative words spoken kill more people than disasters, weapons, um, <clears throat> and illnesses. That tiny instrument in our mouth does more damage than what we know. And so words spoken and, and malice and spoken thoughtlessly can do a lot of damage. Now, what type of damage does it do? And what are these negative things? Um, what are the negative uh, connotations that we as people, the things that we say that can kill, murder, injure, um, another person. Well, when we talk negative about others and ourselves, when we put people down, when we spread rumors, gossip, lying to others, lying to ourselves, lying on other people, making assumptions, malice, throwing people under the bus, and coarse joking. This here can kill a person's spirit, their reputation, their self-esteem, maybe even any potential that they may have, it causes people to view that person in a negative light whenever they see them. It causes people to refuse to connect to that person because of what was said. And it sows seeds of negativity, which springs up and defiles the hearer. It defiles everyone. And my friend, the ultimate, the ultimate is when a person is, has been pushed to the edge so much by rumors, lies, gossip spoken about them that they decide to take their lives. More people take their lives and commit suicide due to things being said about them than anything else. Now, can negativity, can it spread? Is it infectious? Yes, it is. Negativity can spread like a wildfire. And what happens is, as a poison, it poisons the mind, the thoughts, and the attitudes of those that hear it. When a negative person walks into a room, 
People can tell. They give off a certain vibe. They, a negative person can clear a room in a heartbeat. They come in, the facial expressions, their body language, their posture, everything screams negativity. And so as soon as they open their mouths, you know, you'll start to notice people start to back away. They'll move away from them. They want to say their hellos and goodbyes as quickly as possible. And then they want to go on to enjoy the social gathering. So negativity, it is poisonous. It does spread. It, it can infect you. If you are around it long enough, you will start to take on those qualities and those beliefs of that negative person. Have you ever been excited about an idea and been so enthusiastic to share it with a, a group and there's that one negative person that pipes in and decides to rain on your parade? Well, what they will do, they will tell you that back in 1999, they tried the very same idea and it didn't work. They will give you 101 reasons why your idea, your, your, um, your challenge for change will never work. So that lets you know right there how negativity can spread, how it is infectious like a poison. Have you ever been in the presence of a negative person? Had a conversation with them? Well, how did you feel once that conversation was over? I guarantee you when you walked away, you felt drained emotionally, physically, and mentally. My friend, to think positive or negative, it is a choice. We all have that choice. And so God has given us the ability to take captive every thought and put it under the submission of the word. So we don't have to run around and allow negative thoughts to just run rush eye all over our, our mind and take over our life. We can take those thoughts captive. We can change them. We can replace those negative thoughts with positive ones, whether it's a positive affirmation, a mantra, or a positive verse in the Bible. You have that control. The Bible tells us that a negative person challenges your faith. They can make take your faith and turn it into doubt very quickly. And as Christians, we all will have the biggest battle every day with our faith. But when you throw negativity into it, it makes the battle even worse. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5 states that a person that's negative who has doubting faith or little faith has a form of godliness, but denying the power. And so, my friend, I just want to let you know, don't be that person. Don't be the negative Nelly that reigns on the parade. Don't be the negative person that walks into a social gathering and clears the room. Don't be the negative person that murders someone's spirit or their potential or pushes someone over the edge. My friend, my friend, don't be that person. Now, before I end this video, I want to leave you with a little bit of a song by McFadden and Whitehead called Ain't No Stopping Us Now. And they produced this song back in 1979. Now, I know that I'm dating myself, but I remember listening to the song uh, and really enjoying it. And I know that some of you out there listening, I know you've heard this song too. So let me just leave you with a little bit of it. It says, Ain't No Stopping Us Now by McFadden and Whitehead. Have you ever met a person with a negative vibe? If you ever try to make it, they'll only push you aside. They really don't have nowhere to go. Ask them where they're going and they don't know. But we won't let nothing hold us back. And then it goes on to say, ain't no stopping us now. We're on the move. Ain't no stopping us now. We got the groove. I love those words. Well, thank you, my friends, so much for listening. If you have enjoyed the content of my YouTube channel, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, and definitely share. And until we meet again, as always, my friends, bye-bye.